Should guitarists learn how to read sheet music, so traditional music notation? Well, this came up in a conversation with uh, my buddy Mike Bradley, who's a fellow fantastic guitar player and YouTuber. I want to show a quick clip of that where we were talking about session musicians that we know that can't read sheet music at all. And it was kind of funny, you'd think they might have to, but so many uh, fantastic guitar players that we've met over the years can't. And let me show you that clip now, and then we'll talk about it more afterwards. Hung out at Tim Pierce's place on the Monday, which was great. Uh, he's an absolute sweetheart of a guy. We got to be had a little chat, no, chat, and I wanted to get inside his mind a bit of what annoys him as a player. Okay. So I thought, let me see what he can't do. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to know. And he was saying about finger picking, not his thing. And, yeah. you know, because you think session player, you can do it all, but he's like, he really can't. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and he can't sight read, which I found quite amazing. Most can't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, any guitar player who can sight read, I mean, they're very rare. And they're probably, they get work in theatres. They the get work and film for like, work and stuff, yeah. They need to be able to play with the rest of like, an, you know, a band that has a conductor, for, for example. For sure, yeah, yeah. Whereas if you're a studio guy, it's just never, I mean, no one's going to give you anything. Really. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to, I've had it once before, years ago, um, you know, I, I, I did a session thing and this guy gave me music and I could feel the bead of sweat. Yeah. Started coming down because I was like, every good boy deserves food. And we had like, a bass player yeah. once in the old band who used to dep for us, and he was used to turning up when he was depping and just being there with a bunch of sheet music for bass lines to really? anything from, yeah. I don't know, Sweet Child of Mine to this, you know, yeah. all the kind of cover band set. And I was like, I can't imagine it. Like, I'm just hoping that I know the song. Nah, I couldn't yeah. sight read it if I didn't know it. Well, you know what? That is a one, changing it a little bit, my one pet peeve I have is uh, when I see people on a gig like and a, they've got their iPad there cover gig and they've yeah. got an iPad there because they're not they're, you're only seeing half the performance aren't you and they're not like for me I want to know the song I want to yeah. be in the moment and you know and so I will learn I've got quite a quick memory remembering stuff but it's getting worse as I'm getting older you know I'm 22 soon you know <laughs> and <Again>. um, <laughs> yeah I know yeah you know I'll see how long I can dine on that but you know fair enough with lyrics but I think it should the term cheat sheet is a reason it's there yes. as, a, as a backup oh, mine's but the best when you know it's like Ross from Friends you know there are many things here you know and they're just <laughs> staring at the thing constantly no, I, lo you know? I love a cheat sheet and um, I often have it or I used to have it for like a second verse yeah, you learn yeah, a song yeah. maybe for the first dance or you yeah. learn it for whatever. For sure. And you're like, I know this song, but so occasionally it gets to the second verse and I'm like, oh God, yeah. what is it? So just really big letters, like yeah. as big as I can get it on a line, just what the first line is. And maybe the first line of the song as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, under pressure, you go to the mic and you're like, no, it's gone. It's gone. And you need to just be able to go, oh, there it is. It's good. And I often do it on lessons and I'll have like the lyrics like down here or something. So it looks like I'm looking at my chord hand. But no, there's like a chord sheet there or there. <laughs> Just so it doesn't look like this. You yeah. know what I mean? You're trying to you're trying to always give the illusion that you're... It, it's like a stand-up learning a... Well, they're yeah. trying to make it seem like this is the first time we've done it. And yeah. isn't this going well? You know, but know there's what? a magic to that. So, do guitarists have to learn how to read traditional sheet music, notes on the page, traditional notation? It's a fact that they don't have to. So many pro guitarists can't. So many guitarists who earn a living playing live, recording in a studio at every level, many of them can't. The two are places that particularly come to mind where you do have to, where is ex expected, are uh, dep gigs where you might have to read sheet music um, to be able to play that with that band um, because you're hired last minute and you won't rehearse too much with the band and they'll put you on sheet. Um, definitely when it comes to playing with an orchestra in the pit in theatre, in musicals, that tends to be sight reading on the page. Even once you've rehearsed, even once you know it, you're following the page. Um, it also comes about quite a bit in film music and music for TV and things like that. But in the studio, when you're in a band, when you've written the songs yourself, not really. It really isn't even expected or required. But as learner guitar players, there are advantages. There are things where tab alone isn't good enough. And I wanted to cover those today. The one advantage that tab 
does have over traditional sheet music notation isn't just that it's easier perhaps for some people to read once you get used to it it is in fact that it shows you exactly which note to play for example this e note here fifth fret on the b string this is, would be written exactly the same as this e which is the open string it would be written the same as this e and this e they're the same pitch and on traditional notation, it would all be that same E note. So how would you know which one to play? That is where tab actually has the advantage because it shows you exactly which E you would be required to play. And it's wildly different, so it's really important. However, there are other places where, particularly when it comes to rhythm, rhythm notation in tab is really bad. And this is actually why a lot of guitarists kind of, it's the rhythm that lets them down rather than where they're putting the fingers. Um, certainly when it comes to jamming with other people, jamming onto a song, you may have found this yourself. Even when it comes to playing full songs, it's actually the rhythm that goes before they, before where the fingers are going. Now. Beyond that though, beyond knowing which note to play, where tab has the advantage, reading rhythm which traditional notation has the advantage, but we can combine that. Real tab should have rhythm notation. The ultimate guitar kind of uh, tab that's there without rhythm notation isn't giving you enough of the picture to be able to read it on the page and know how it goes. Uh, but beyond that, there's actually, I believe, more important non-sight reading, uh, but theory points or background music theory, really, that you should need to know that you don't have to be able to read traditional notation for. Tab suffices, but it's also the background knowledge and connecting that to the sound of it. These include, as we've spoken about before, diatonic chords, um, so chords in a key, like key of C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. The reason that is in the key of C, all those chords are in the key of C, yes, is because of the sound of it. That's the diatonic chord theory. They're the common chords in a key. But the real reason is there's no sharps or flats. And if you don't read music, that wouldn't be a concept that you might, you might be uh, not at the forefront of your mind. But it's actually, sheet music would have a key signature. So that is one advantage there. But is it essential? No, you can just know the theory. Uh, chord scale theory, so kind of like where does a sus2 come from, or a sus4, or an add9, adding a scale note to a chord, that can have its advantages, but we don't have to sight read it, we don't have to have it written down on the page, tab will suffice and the theory knowledge will suffice. Uh, and then kind of scales or mode theory, so kind of like a major scale being the Ionian mode and then uh, start from the major scale but start from the second note of that major scale, you've got the Dorian mode etc. Or knowing what your minor pentatonic is uh, and then the blues scale from that. Um, that kind of thing, again you don't need it written down in traditional notation, tab is actually good enough. So there are pros and cons and some people learn things in different ways. But to finish up as a rounding point for this video, I really want to communicate that so many people who are musicians that I've known throughout my life playing uh, orchestral instruments, playing piano, instruments where you have to sight read. I believe, in my experience, they're more likely to stop playing, to kind of just stop and give up be not because they weren't making progress, but because learning it to a higher level just didn't seem to be fulfilling, especially when they perhaps didn't have an orchestra to play in. Um, and guitarists tend to actually keep playing when they start to learn how to improvise, which isn't something sight reading sheet music can particularly help you with. So yeah, learning pieces or learning certain things, uh, sheet music can really help, but it shouldn't be the end goal. The end goal should be able to imagine some music and then be able to play or hear some music and naturally know what to play both along to it and over it. Which me and Mike um, talked about a little later in conversation. I will show that clip now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this topic because it's a huge debate and uh, I'll leave you with this. I do, um, once a year I do this big award show uh, at the Grosvenor Hotel in Park Lane. It's like, Is that the one you've sent, um, shared some reels I did a reel recently? recently, yeah. So this, this year, who was the host? Oh my goodness. It's, 
Uh, there was a com- woman comedian and the male was... Oh, Rylan. He was the host. Oh, amazing. He's, he's really good. Nice. He's really nice. He, and he, you don't think of him as a comedian, but he but was funny and mm. off the cuff. Um, really funny. And in Alan Carr, I remember one year, yeah. was just hysterical. And um, actually, I, I don't, I'm going to say his name. Uh, I think it was last year. It was Jason Mansford. Just Manford. Yeah, Jason Manford. Yeah, the, the uh, Manchester company. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen him in concert, and he is very, like, joke, joke, joke. And yes. they're great, but what I found interesting on this award show, he had his um, teleprompter and was reading everything. And just read it. And yeah. then just bashed through all the awards and everything like that. And for me, it just takes... It doesn't have that same on the on the, the edge of your seat, like, oh, where they're going to go. It's literally a corporate you know? thing, isn't it? Yeah. He's, he's there to, to do the job. Yes. Yeah. It's a payer for them, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. But even, like I say, when I saw him in, in, on one of his gigs, you know, I could tell it's, okay, here's one joke, blah, 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 blah. Here's another joke, blah, blah. And I like that kind of, I like improvising. You yes. Know, if it's guitar, if it's comedian, even acting and stuff, you know. Keep it sharp, keep yeah, it fun. Yeah. Band, band, band. So even there, you know, when you're reading a joke, yes, it's not it's quite... Not the same. The same Because I do love hearing, like, a live orchestra. Yeah. I'm certainly not downplaying, like, how amazing it can be when, when players who have to, on orchestral instruments, like, have to, it's expected that they'll sight read. Mm. It is still exciting in a different way, but the live show, when you've only got four people on stage, mm-hmm. it needs to be exciting from a connection with the audience. 100%, you know, I mean... I know you see a lot of concerts, don't you? You know, and you see something. I mean, Chili Peppers come to mind, but yeah. they're the only band I've seen live where they're playing for each other. Yes. They're not really playing for the audience. Yeah, they jam. <laughs> you know, they, they do jam, jam a lot. Stage, and I love and then, that. And then you know. songs come out of it. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, and pivot like, into something. Yeah, that, that's what happened in you know, Hendrix and Cream and all those guys. They just go off on a tangent. Sometimes capturing be, moments. Yeah, sometimes it'd be a cacophony of a mess. <laughs> you know, but, but that's what sometimes happens, yeah. you're going to get a beautiful thing happen, you know. Yeah.